Teachers Union condemns education move on salaries. Priest calls for true Easter celebrations. And close victory for PNG hunters. This is National MTV News with Hope Imaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. This is Sunday's News. Teachers in the country will boycott classes in Term 2 if their colleagues are put off the payroll. Teachers Association General Secretary Ugualubu Mwana made this comment following an article published in one of the daily newspapers that 12,000 teachers who have failed to submit their resumption of duties forms will be put off the payroll. Mr. Moana said issues relating to teachers' salaries have become an annual concern, especially for those in other provinces. He has called on the chairman and the secretary of education and the teachers' commission to take steps to address this concern. And my message is very clear. I don't want to see anybody tempering around with wages and salaries of teachers. That has been going for years. All right? this so-called automatic suspension. My message to the Department of Education and Teaching Service Commission and the government is very simple. You put up 12,000 teachers, 53,000 teachers on payroll now will go on strike. Full stop. The threat to boycott classes nationwide is an approach teachers in the country will be taking to push concerned bodies to address the threat to their salaries. Moana said the department cannot continue to play around with teachers' salaries. And my message is very clear to the teaching service chairman. Anybody touch the teacher space next week and put it automatically off payroll will result that there will be no term two schools in this country. Mark my word, I don't play around. I will not follow procedures. My message is very clear. Teachers are sick and tired of that so-called cleansing and Cleansing of the payroll. Meanwhile, the acting education secretary, Dr. Oke Kombra, explained in a newspaper article that issues relating to teachers' salaries will not be addressed at the Education Ed Office in Port Mosby and referred the matter to the provincial education boards. Thakla so, Gunga, National uh, MTV News. Uh, WeWork General Hospital CEO Mark Maludu is hopeful that June 2016 will be a good month for the hospital. He hopes that by then, current renovation work on two surgical wards will be completed and their provincial health authority will be in place. Mr. Mauludu says with the province's health management in its current structure, health centres are not doing so well. At the moment, rural health services are managed by provincial government through provincial health office. There are times that you know uh, services are not operating as we expect in the like aid post, health centers, and all that. There's no drugs, no manpower, and all that sort of. With a new corporate plan at hand, he believes changes that have already taken place and those being planned will ensure the health authority will be established in the province by June this year. They're working towards that as well so to see that both rural health services and hospital will come under one, one, uh, one management, you know, so to say, so that uh, we can be able to manage both the hospital and be able to go out to rural health services as well. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Moran Boram's hospital rebirth will be on topics straight after the news tonight. Make sure you catch that. Over in Medang, officers from the Works Department are working around the clock to reopen the road link into Medang Town. Sections of the National Highway were cut off following heavy rains on Friday night. Passengers travelling into Medang from Leh and the Highlands provinces were, were forced to wait on the highway until damages were fixed. The affected areas are Omea, Kesewai, Asas and Dumpi. These are the same areas which were affected in by the floods from March last year. 
The PNG Women in Business will now be expanding their focus to underprivileged young women in the community. PNG Women in Business Director Janet Sape said they will be training young women on financial literacy and basic bookkeeping classes. Mrs. Sape believes financial education will enable women to better budget their homes, acquire a job and run their own businesses. Janet Sape said she has seen many young women without jobs and school leavers in the community. This has prompted her initiative to deliver financial literacy. Looking at uh, especially young people who are dropping out of school, the young women like yourself, others like from 16, 18 years old up to about 30 years old, this young bracket of women who have nothing to do, who have left out in school um, and who haven't found a job, we'd like to train them and we'd like to help them to get into self-employment as a form of employment for themselves and also to assist the women and the people in the community. So we want the women and the young girls to be the agents for change. Apart from financial literacy, there will also be other skill trainings such as art and craft that can be sold. This is a tissue box covered with shelves all over. The successful businesswoman believes that in giving women the opportunity to become businesswomen, they can earn an income and at the same time develop life skills. We're going to pilot it here in Mosby and um, these are two leaders from uh, Morata who are here with me and uh, we're going to um, get them to assist us, identify women who want to do business. He wants to introduce this uh, project to Morata. Uh, there's a lot of women who are living in Murata who are not able to make their own way of living or getting a job after completing schools, and most of them are young mothers. Uh, they have been just a housewife. When this course is introduced to Murata, I hope uh, they will find their lives uh, improve. Mrs. Sape hopes that through this, it will inspire more young women to venture out into the business world. Marilyn Diaukatam, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. The true meaning of Easter has been lost. Easter has become commercialized and this is raising concerns among the faithful. A clergy from the Catholic Church says people have shifted away from Easter's true celebration of the suffering, death and resurrection of our Redeemer Jesus Christ. Father Dominic Marker from the Port Mosby Archdiocese shared his peace of mind on the true meaning of Easter. Father Dominic said that Easter must be celebrated with faith and goodwill. As we live in a world of modern uh, influences, that's why you know Easter is becoming like an like an advertisement of uh, certain goods that we need to buy in stores and so forth. But the real meaning of Easter is people coming together as believers in Christ, acknowledging Christ as the Lord and Savior. Father Dominic said using Easter eggs or rabbits as symbols on advertisement is more or less to promote to the understanding of modern times. Those advertisements, it is more or less to promote the understanding of the years, modern time. But the real Easter for us who are called Christian, we all have to humble ourselves, and not so much by going through the dustbin of history, but see the purpose of God's love for us as human beings. The expression of God's love on humankind must be seen through Jesus Christ, who carried his cross and suffered for our sinfulness. We focus on Jesus, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that we must follow him. He is our way. He is the source of all truth, as according to John 8.32, the truth will set us free. And because we walk the, the truth, we walk the way, and we follow the truth, that will lead us to attain eternal life and eternal life we all say new jerusalem we all would like to be happy in heaven fabian harkowitz national mtv news 
Christians around the world have celebrated Palm Sunday to begin the Holy Week. Palm Sunday begins the Christian calendar and strong foundation where the faithful reflect on their faith as Holy Week opens. Its solemn meaning is God reigns. Palm Sunday opens the most important week of Christian calendar. Christians around the world today gathered in worship to commemorate Palm Sunday, animating Christ's entry into Jerusalem as King of all mankind through palms. Holy Week starts today on Palm Sunday in which we remember Jesus going into Jerusalem as King as people who believe in him attest that he is the king. Easter Tridium are three special days in the Holy Week that depicts the life of Christ, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday, suffering death and resurrection of our Lord. It's the Paschal mystery of salvation, Christ's victory over sin and death that we are called to serve. He humbled himself and washed the feet of his disciple and then giving us one of the fundamentals of life uh, is love that we have to love one another and by expressing that love we have to humble ourselves in service giving that service to our brothers and sisters the passion of christ is animated on good friday where christians around the world walk the stations of the cross for god so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's an expression of God's love, endless love for all humanity. That is Good Friday. And then Easter Vigil or Easter Sunday morning, love over sin, uh, victory over sin and death. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. Landowners in the Sipic Plains, where the proposed agro-industrial zone is set to commence, will be given direct participation in the project. Special Economic Zone Sipic Oil Palm Project Manager Thomas Yehiwara said they have developed a new model that is unique from other industrial zones. Called the Sipic model, it will allow landowners to have direct shareholding in any projects on their land. The model is unique and will give landowners full participation in any agricultural developments happening on the land, unlike other projects where land is being leased to developers to develop, the CIPIC model is different. This model will not allow landowners to lease their land. However, landowners can use their land title to partner with a developer who intends to use their land. The Sipic Plains, where the agro-industrial zone is being proposed, initially for oil palm, but now expand to other agricultural commodities, will use this new model. Landowners will have to release their customary land, strictly grassland, to the Special Economic Zone Committee to register through the ILG process. Project manager Thomas Yeyuara said land titles will then be given back to the landowners so they can become shareholders in any projects instead of leasing the land. This investment is that we have some MOUs for them to voluntarily, through the ILG registration process, sign up, release Kunai, strictly grasslands, for us to survey, mobilize, register under the ILG process, and the land title will eventually be given back to the landowners. They will partner with the investors and the national government to bring in investors. So far, the team has surveyed about 55,000 hectares of customary grassland in the Sipic Plains already. We are about over half way through our uh, targeted deliverable, which is 100,000. The three years of land mobilization will end in April next year. Quinten Alomp, National MTV News. More on the CIPIC SEZ will also be on this evening's Talk Pixar at 6.30 p.m. In election terms, voting is just around the corner and parties are gearing up for 2017. 
The People's National Congress held their first fundraiser for this year and safe to say it was an extravagant affair. Red carpet, ball gowns and photo opportunity. This was just the start of an evening designed to impress. Thank you. Thank you. The leader of the PNC party, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and his wife Linda were at hand to welcome all the guests who attended the sold out black and gold themed ball. The Sir John Guy Stadium indoor complex was unrecognizable with around a hundred tables laid out for guests to enjoy a multi-course meal while being entertained not only by one of PNG's current favorites but by an international artist as well. No pledges were publicly announced during the night and the total amount raised is yet to be confirmed. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Chukai Sports is next. Stay tuned. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The SP PNG Hunters beat the Tweed Head Seagulls 20 to 18 in a close encounter at the National Football Stadium in Port Moresby last night. The Hunters were first to register two points through Noel Zeming after Tweed Heads conceded a penalty 10 meters in front of their try line. Tweed Heads replied with a try to lead 4 to 2. The, the Hunters regrouped and responded with a try through halfback Watson Boas. The Hunters extended their lead 14 to 4 after forward Edward Goma crashed over the line. Seagulls fought back with a converted try to reduce the margin 14 10. In the second half, it was a hard fought match that kept the crowd on their feet, with Seagulls converting a penalty and scoring a try to lead 18 to 14. With 10 minutes remaining on the clock, Ate Binawabo scored for the Hunters to take them into the lead and win the match. And they had to uh, dig deep and uh, uh, come away with the, the, the uh, two points. But they yeah, no, I think uh, uh, good challenge from uh, two heads. I think they, they didn't uh, give up easily, we, even though we, we were leading by four points for a start. But yeah, now we. we we, we had some problems with our players, injuries and stuff like that, so that's probably something we have to uh, work on for next weekend. But yeah, no, it's, uh, it was a tough, tough game today, yeah. It, it was a really physical game. Uh, they were they were really prepared and uh, we really stuck with you know, I can play despite uh, a lot of mistakes and robots, but they were really digging and they were really proud of their football points put into the final two points. Yeah. Prominent martial artist Jamuga Stone has been officially invited by Grandmaster and movie star Chuck Norris to attend the Kickstart Kids Foundation annual dinner in Houston, Texas. The dinner will be on the 13th of May. Stone will also be using this occasion to talk to Chuck Norris about his community project in NCD and in the country. Stone will look at why Norris' program, Kickstart Kids Foundation, has been so successful in USA, especially in his home state, Texas. Stone will also take this rare opportunity to train under his legendary martial arts icon and movie star Chuck Norris. Stone will be accompanied by Stephen Tommy, a young New Island champion martial artist in Taekwondo and Tonglong Kung Fu, and Sam Ware, Stone's Taekwondo Development Officer. During this trip, Stone will take this opportunity to humbly request to Chuck Norris to visit PNG in September on the occasion of a martial arts extravaganza. Stone will be seeking assistance from Sports and Tourism Minister Justin Chachenko and NCD Governor Power Sparkop and the USA Embassy for a sponsorship of 50,000 kina. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. 
That ends Chukai Sports. The weather details when we come back. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. Your weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. In the southern region, some showers for Port Mosby and Daru, rain showers for Kerma and Popondetta, and thundery showers for Alatau. In the Mumase region, rain showers for Lei and Medang, and some showers expected for Wiwak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands, some showers for Lorengau, Th thundery showers for Kaviang, Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe, and some showers as well for Buka. And in the Highlands region, rain showers expected for all centres. Before we go, recapping our main stories for tonight. Teachers' Union condemns education move on salaries, priest calls for true Easter celebrations, and the hunters just managed to beat the seagulls. That's been the news, sports and weather this Sunday, the 20th of March, 2016. On behalf of the news team, pleasant viewing. Good night.